Hello, welcome to PC Mag Live. I'm Dan Costa, she is Samara Lin, and we've got a great show for you today. We're gonna to break down the top tech news of the day, we're gonna answer one of your reader questions, and then we're gonna show you one cool thing that we pulled off the shelf in the lab. Let's start with the big news of the day. Samsung is announcing two new phones, and neither one of them is gonna be available in the US. Uh, but the Samsung Z, is, it, there's a lot of firsts in this phone. There's a lot of reasons why it's a very newsworthy device. Well, first of all, it uses the uh, Samsung's custom OS, Tizen. Yeah, I mean, Tizen. Like, it, Tizen. Which we've been waiting for, we've been hearing about, and, and obviously Samsung is totally invested in the Android market, right. but this is their own operating system. Oh, yeah, and I mean, it's obvious that uh, Samsung's kind of looking to free themselves from the yoke of Google, mm -hmm. and they're kind of uh, testing the waters, but not here. Yeah, this is uh, the, the Samsung Z is what it's called. It's gonna be available in Russia in the third quarter. They're announcing, giving it to developers, so hopefully they can start building an ecosystem around it. I wouldn't expect to see it in the US anytime soon, but a very interesting phone. You can read all about it on PC Mag. And then the other one that they just announced, the Galaxy W, which is gonna be available in Korea. But I mean, the, the unique thing about this phone, seven inch screen. Yeah, I mean, it sounds. I mean, it sounds like there would be play for these devices here, but it's really not that unusual to really start with like kind of these newer devices in emerging markets. I mean, the market is pretty saturated here. Seven so. inches just seems like it's like too big to be a phone. Yeah. And that, I mean, then you're talking phablet. Yeah. Um, but then again, I, I was wrong about the uh, you know these larger form factor devices in the past, but I just wonder if seven inches is too big for the U.S. market. Well, it's definitely experimental. So yeah. That's why I'm sure Samsung's made the decision not to uh, just kind of keep it close to home. So. Then also in the news, most of us are familiar with pi, the mathematical constant um, and a sort of geek icon. Um, it turns out most people may not realize that pi is actually owned by an artist in Brooklyn. Um, that's right. <laughs> an artist named Paul Ingrisano has trademarked Pi and is using it to keep online swag house uh, Zazzle from pr publishing and putting out products and mugs and t-shirts with the Pi logo on it. Well, he kind of sort of owns Pi. He says he owns Pi. So I guess if you read the particulars of this story, the actual trademark is Pi with a period. Mm -hmm. and a Funny lot of, in a certain way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not like Pi, like no one will be able to write it again in like homework, but it's like a very specifically formatted Pi. But you remember a few years ago when Zuckerberg tried to um, uh, trademark face? Yeah. It was kind of like the same yeah. type of I think like it's absurd. indignation. And, and Zazzle, you know, for a while they actually pulled down all these products. Mm -hmm. They have since reinstated all these products right. so that there are still all these People other very angry. icons. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's, I, I think it's a ridiculous thing to trademark. And it's certainly not going to win him any friends on Zazzle or anywhere else. No, but if you look at the uh, images of the trademark, it, it's pretty specific about what he can use it for trademark. It's just apparel, and it is with that period. But, I mean, it's kind of specific, but it seems So you think he silly. deserves it? You think he owns it? Well, I mean, legally... You're not going to say, all right, let's move on. <laughs> let's move on to a reader question. We answer reader questions via Twitter, on Facebook, uh, via email. Uh, this question actually came in via Facebook, and it's about a review that you wrote. Um, he, he wants to know about this. You just did a batch of cloud computing right, surfaces. Right. And uh, Bruce Levinson wants to know, or, yeah, uh, Bruce Levinson mm -hmm. wants to know what is... Windows Azure, right? And why would a small business use it? Because there's a lot of confusion about Azure. Yeah, and you know, Bruce asked like a very simple but amazing question because I, I think Microsoft, Rackspace, and all the cloud providers they do a really poor job explaining to people who are new to the space what a cloud platform is. Mm -hmm. And essentially, a business would use it to take their IT infrastructure off premise and into a cloud. So you save on hardware costs. You have centralized management. There's a lot of good cases for cloud platforms. And another thing we're seeing a lot of uh, use case for it are these small businesses that create these startup cloud service um, applications. They don't want to invest in all this hardware. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they rent servers from Microsoft, from Rackspace, from Amazon, and they have all the infrastructure they need and all they have to focus on is on developing their application and serving their customers. But again, the, the companies do a kind of a piss poor job explaining why a small business needs it. And it saves, I mean, it, it saves business owners money, That's presumably. Right. That's but right. But also you've been an IT manager, so how does this make the IT manager's job easier? Well, first of all, you don't have to have a lot of IT staff. Mm -hmm. It reduces your budget. I mean, when you have uh, everything in the cloud, you're basically working with the provider for any like server failures. Mm -hmm. Hardware is something they, they have to be concerned about, not you and mm -hmm. your data center. So it frees you up with a lot of resources. Very cool. So. And you can read more about your reviews online That's at right. PCMag. Mm -hmm. Azure is your pick for small business cloud services? Choice. Yep, four and a half out of five stars. 
Check out her full review. She will tell you why. Let's move on to one cool thing. We test thousands of products here in the lab in New York City. Every day we take one thing off the shelf and show it to you live. Today that thing is the Tivoli Audio Albergo. It's this retro looking box. I love that. Tivoli is known for its retro systems. And it's a clock radio. Yeah, and it's it's a clock radio, and you would think at a price at about two forty nine, uh, the best deal around. It's pretty expensive clock radio, but it's not just a clock radio. It's also a Bluetooth speaker, so you can perfect think, for next yeah. to the bed. You pair your phone, That's you right. can listen to your mm -hmm. internet radio mm -hmm. through it. Obviously, it has an FM tuner as mm -hmm. well. That's why mm -hmm. they've got the antenna. Mm -hmm. But a great high classy looking thing that pairs very nicely with your cell phone. Yeah, and our analyst, um, Al uh, Alex, uh, he stated it was, uh, sounded really well, had a good sound, uh, Bluetooth, he didn't have any um, connection issues. So, I mean, it's, it's pricey for an alarm clock, but not if you're considering that you can use it also as a Bluetooth speaker. Indeed, and better so. looking than your average Absolutely. alarm clock. Absolutely, very cool. Very cool. You can <laughs> check out that full review on PCMag.com. That's been PCMag Live for today. Tune in later on today. We're going to have a great uh, feedback and reaction session when, for Apple's WWDC. We'll be back tomorrow with a brand new show. Thanks for joining us.